All right, we are here with uh, Mason Lang and Mark Kederberg with St. Lotus to talk about the St. Lotus Presents number five, the draft that we finished up uh, a couple weeks ago at this point. But we're yep. going to be excited to talk through it live, just like it's happening today. Absolutely, we love it. Here we go. Get ready to get into the action, see some cardboard fly. So it starts oh off. my god, it's going so quickly. Holy Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's the, the first through. round goes fast, and after that, it'll slow down. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, see, I think the first interesting thing here is Daniel over here, who just slam picks Thalia on yeah. his number eight seat. And I think this is Dan's Wild first choice. draft. So he obviously yeah. was going mono white um, from this this pick. I don't, can't imagine there's another way he could go. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, he's giving Thalia Guardian of the Raven its due respect because that card is busted, okay? Uh, and it's very underdrafted. So I, it's very cool to see him value it, even if he maybe should have picked up Mox. Hmm. I think it's uh, not very good, but that's we can have a conversation as we go through the draft. Mm -hmm. but, um, mm -hmm. I get a double Mox. Dan, a Magnan, was really excited. He gets to do the Time Vault mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, um, it's really surprising to me that neither Dan nor Sam pick uh, Time Walk here. Kind of crazy. Uh, I think it's fine. I, I think if I were Scott, I would take it. Um, Oh, but the saga take, taking saga this early is very good and i'm really sad it doesn't make it back around to me that's fair um man and then a force of will a white plume a vamp tutor still no one's picking the time walk yeah i mean Isn't cody that crazy? I mean, probably time walk's should like the, here the next best unpowered card it's crazy and white... then it oh. makes it by the sapphire player and now to the recall player Right? You'd think recall time walk, that's kind of like the best thing you could possibly be doing. I could see an argument for Force of Will over time walk. Um, and similarly, like White Plume and Mana Crypt play really nicely together. Vamp and Lotus play really nicely together if you're going to do like the Luris thing. Mm, maybe. Uh, but... Cody's pick here of Ragavan and, and Thoughtseize is just like mono, like one drops. I, I don't love, but. Uh, yeah, I, think... I feel like you want to put yourself on three colors in your first three picks seems kind of crazy to me, but okay. I, I believe he he didn't know he wanted. I didn't know he, he didn't want to be in a blue deck, so he kind of got forced into the recall, uh, and then well, from there was pivoting. He could have taken Lotus shortly. True, right? I agree. I mean, and there's uh, Scott. If you were so if you were so devoted to not playing blue that you didn't want to pair your recall with a time walk. You'd think you'd just pick the Lotus. <laughs> or the Crypt, even. I mean, why not? And then we let um, Dan get the Tinker with the Time Vault. It's just sh kind of shameful. Mm, it's an odd uh, pick order for some yeah. of the blue players, I think. It's a little little strange, but Tinker is a good one with Time Vault. So, you know, I like the Tinker nice. first, because I think it gives you more choices than Time Vault does. But, I mean, either one of those is fine. It works out great. Mm -hmm. LED comes out a little early here, a little before, I would imagine. I think uh, LED falls into that fast band category of it can get picked very quickly or mm -hmm. just, you know, kind of never at all. So it's interesting to see Sam go for it so quickly. Yeah, and, and LED does get taken, um, like, super... It, it's, it messes up both uh, Magnin and my decks. Like, we, had, we both mm -hmm. are just, like, screaming at the table because that's not a thing we expected to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Strip mine yeah, wasteland is was... also uh, like. Oh yeah. I think strip mine going this late makes sense, but the wasteland is very early. One hundred percent. I mean, Dan knows what he wants to do. I mean, totally. he's here to like play Legacy Death in Texas. That's mm -hmm. that's his jam. And it looks like we can't see the Minskin Boo that you took, but that's okay. We know it's there. It's there. Yeah. D Tutor getting taken away from Stephen Hagen. If he's gonna pick Vamp Tutor first, base like or his first colored spell he's gonna pick. Vamp Tutor, it's crazy that he lets Demonic Tutor get taken from him. So yeah, Void, Void Walker going Void there Walker. doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a reason. A little early. Yeah, Steven's not new to this or anything, so I'm no. sure he had a thought, but... Ooh, and then he snipes the Stone Forge and stick away from Daniel. Oof, brutal. Yeah. Which is especially brutal when he's getting these other black cards taken from him. You'd think he might want to double down and take a card like Oakrish Bowmasters. Oh my god. These three white cards um, in a row just, like, completely a pooping all over Cardno there. Mm-hmm. hundred percent. It's uh kind of oof. Yeah. Newly banned Cody grief. just doubles down. He's like, Man, we gotta get gotta get every black card. Yeah, back then they didn't know grief was banned, so <laughs> they didn't know how good it was yet. Um and then this is a really fun pick by Steven. I love this. The Luris. It's like, okay, well, some of his picks, you know, they it starts to make sense where he's prioritizing his stuff. Fifth pick Luris like is, a, is pretty early. I'm gonna check St. Lotus just to see how early it actually goes now, but 
Oh, you mean the St. Louis website where you can check the pick or uh, priorities of different cards uh, taken frequently in Vintage or History Draft? Yeah, so usually it goes like pick 14 through 20, but in the in the draft before this one actually it went round 6, which must be in Steven's mind. Yeah, interesting. Well, Steven does love checking that website and checking out where exactly the different cards go. Mm -hmm. I believe he refers to it as his money ball approach. <laughs> I do like this Mox Diamond. That one's a good one. Oh yeah. Well, Mox Diamond is a great card. I usually like to. See, I don't necessarily like to see it in these really heavy white decks because I think they have a hard time uh, refilling. Yeah. Capitalizing on the lands going to the graveyard. Uh, but you know, mice. This, it's it's not an awful pick. This is a late hall okay. breacher, like um, and it doesn't really work with Scott's picks. But I guess like there's a lot of ways that it can. It's like super powerful, right? It makes sense to take it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. I don't like my manager in here at all. It's a. Uh, it's fine card, but it's mostly counterspell. And even with like the planeswalkers, like Minskin Boo, I still don't love being able to use it. Mm -hmm. It kind of puts you in a bit of a clunky spot because if you're not managing on turn two, it's like, well, you, I have all these permanents that I want to play on turns like three, four, or five. So it's like, where am I fitting in holding up this managing mana? Totally. It'd be a little awkward. <clears throat> and Aether Vial is a good pick up there. Solitude's also a great pick. Yeah, I think a lot of people think of Solitude as, like, the best white creature, or, you know, certainly one of the like top most three. popular white creatures, yeah, to get picked quickly and, uh, and early. Um, above, m most people have it above Thalia, even though, obviously, that's crazy. Uh, it's um, far better than Thalia. Thalia's top ten, maybe. <laughs> oh, Thalia, number one, followed closely by Stone Fortune Stick. I think I would Thalia might be art. the second best Thalia Woo, in this Thalia. format. <laughs> Second best value is funny. Uh, yeah, kind of some cool stuff. Steven picking up the Walking Blister, which is really smart. Walking Blister is almost always one of those cards that four yeah. different people at the table kind of want. It's all just about and where you someone takes about. it and everyone always, oh, damn it. Oh, I'm really blown out there. Sam announcing the plan here with Bitter Blossom Skull Clamp on six, <laughs> five and six as well. This is kind of a classic Sam move, right? I mean, yeah, she makes a play. She just takes her claim. She loves to go for the black ball creature magnus list is men. fire i love everything about this though tinker into time vault tinker into the one ring mana vault to tie it all together his list yeah, is incredible 100 one ring is also incredibly good with all the keys in the format yeah, true uh he if he goes and picks up some monoliths now like he has infinite key value and at that point it's just like oh these otherwise a plus b combo pieces are now just incredibly good cards in my deck they work with half of my deck. Cody uh, Cody kicked off really the fetch good. land train as well, and then Scott follows. Mm, yep, yep. Well, Cody uh, Cody must think to himself, there are no more good colored spells that I can take. I <laughs> might as well start picking lands. Sam taking the Karn away from Dan. <laughs> kind of brutal, but also good job. Way to way to play the draft, not just uh, your own strategy, but way mm -hmm. to sort of check out the field a little bit, adjust accordingly. I also like Steven's pick of the Ajani here, because I think that's got to be on card does radar if he's up on the latest cards. Mm-hmm. 100%. And there's Ooh, the other version Asa of it. Tried. Yeah. This, this is probably one that he doesn't have a lot of experience playing with, I imagine. I mean, it's a, it was a fairly new card. It's been, I guess it's been out for a few months, so it's not so new. But uh, Yeah, it was out for about a month at that point. It's probably played mm -hmm. it in a cube, maybe. Mm, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, vintage Cube on MTGO. Yep. Great time to uh, flex the old Vintage Rotisserie Draft muscles, you know? Yeah, it's uh, honestly pretty close. So we have five of the fetches gone. Dan's continuing to take my absolute money list. I love everything about it. You like the Dark Ritual here? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I was like it, because no, Cody would take it. Black here. Sure. I just love the deck. Do you think... Now, he didn't pick up the Lion's Eye Diamond, right? That was Sam? Sam has the Lion's Eye Diamond, and now she has the channel, which I also really wanted for my deck. Do you think uh, Dan is thinking about uh, Through the Breach at this point? Or not Through the Breach, yeah. but... Yeah, I think he's thinking uh, about Thassa's Oracle as the Wind Con. There you go. Yeah, uh, I could imagine. I, I wish he had been thinking about Doomsday, but he doesn't think the card is good, and he's wrong. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Doomsday has uh, been a pretty powerful card in general, I think. Uh yeah. I, think I know it's you've very had good. some solid success with it. And I think some other drafters have too, yeah? Yeah, I mean, you can actually see right over my shoulder there. There's a copy of Doomsday and Dark Ritual. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Love that. This Pyroblast um, is pretty early, I think. 
Yeah, I, it also seems a little late for reanimate, especially with so many people drafting black. I mean, the fact that Sam didn't take the reanimate. Sam seems like she's pivoting now. I mean, what kind of channel decks do you put in in the same deck as like Bitter Blossom? That's a little odd, right? It's little, yeah, little that's a great point. Especially with Urza Saga. I, yeah, I don't yeah. Know. Also she, an LED. I'm thinking she must be doing something pretty specific to want this like kind of exact combination of cards in her deck. Yeah, I think she wanted to be in black green, just like black green stuff, play in the Mason special. Uh, and then we love Channel's a very stuff. good green card. Like everybody at the table had up the St. Lotus uh, top cards list and was following along with which cards were there. <laughs> so there weren't any missed cards. I mean, like everyone yeah. had it available. 100%. And honestly, kind of based. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. So I think some of that might just be that. It's like, oh, this is the best green card. I'm in a green deck. I should take it. Mm. Sure, sure. That's understandable. Fast Bond again. Yeah, it seems like we're doing some kind of a little pivot move here. Like, these cards seem They're a different. little disparate. Um, the problem with Channel and Fast Bond, and these are cards that people really like to play together, is Channel makes you want to have lots of big guys in your deck, and Fast Bond makes you want to have lots of lands in your deck. Right. And those two things, if you draw an opening hand that has lots of lands and lots of big guys, you're probably dead. Yep. <laughs> like, you need... A, one of your combo cards and they just eh, they function a little funny together. this soren of house markov has to indicate that steven has everything he needs for his deck at this point because <laughs> that card uh, i can't imagine anyone else to take in i have been obsessed with the idea of drafting soren Luris, and martyr of the sands in the same deck oh, but okay. i don't think that's what he's going for here <laughs> is that the white martyr yes yeah. yes and it's one of my probably three or four favorite cards of all time uh, I played it endlessly in Modern, and it's one of my favorites. And I have always wanted to, if the St. Louis, if the St. Lotus crew still had the rule about like Squadron Hawks, yeah. you better believe I'd be digging up Hawks, Just cracking Martyr Sands, and then yeah. bam, dome them with the Soren. Oh, be beautiful. I like Sam's Once Upon a Time. I hate my Fable. I think it's really bad. Yeah, oh. which is crazy because I'm just going to say, kind of a late Fable. Uh, it kind is. Of a great which is why I took it. Up here. I, I, I mm -hmm. took it because it's a late one, and then I realized that it's not very good on my deck. It would have been much nicer, I think, for like Cody to have taken Fable instead of that Pyroblast, because like his yeah. deck just looks primed for it. Yep. Now, do you think this is a defensive Wheel of Fortune? Because he sees the Hole Breacher and the Time Twister, and he's just thinking, like, oh god, I don't want to get... Well, when he, took, get... when he took Wheel of Fortune at Traxa, I was like, okay, for sure, now he's in Reanimate. I need to make sure I can steal big things, because I see mm -hmm. Cody pivoting hard into Reanimator uh, with Wheel mm -hmm. of Fortune, Reanimate, Traxa. So that's, that's where okay. the next pick I make makes sense in that context, even though it doesn't make a lot of sense outside of it. That's fair. That's fair. The Thassa's Oracle uh, is also interesting, given that he doesn't like Doomsday and that the LED's already gone for the Breach, and obviously Black Lotus has gone for the Breach as well. Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. I see Brandon getting his signature Hex Drinker just sniped out from under him. He could not be feeling good about that one. Absolutely yeah, brutal. He's not in green, though. You know, I never I never assume he's not going to be in green <laughs> until I see it. Correct, you yeah, know? he's always in four colors. Well, the 45th pick comes down. Not convinced. His sense, his top is a... I mean, it's the right on time for top. I don't know what it's doing in his deck, but... Um, That's another Brandon Signature, man. He just loves that freaking card. Holy cow. It, it's a pretty powerful one. So here's my Archon uh, to answer his Raxa. Mm, okay, we love that. Because Sam took my channel, so I'm like, I can't go big, big, dumb Eldrazi. Uh, and mm. Cody's stealing my big creatures. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Dan. Probably just going down the white cards and taking all the best white cards. Or, or okay, no, so now he sees that Cody and I are both in reanimator from his point of view. Yeah, at this point, he's got to be pretty reactive, right? Like, he's, I mean, all theoretically, Daniel should be looking at this and thinking to himself... Well, it's not like I'm fighting over any of the cards that are actually going to go in my deck, so I might as well try to pick up some sideboard cards that'll be particularly powerful. I think he's almost too reactive, right? You can see, like, the Lauren and Thal Rod, because it's like, oh, there's artifacts, I better get artifact stuff. And then, oh, there's the graveyard stuff, let me get two graveyard cards. That almost feels like just watching for whatever the last uh, 16 picks were and taking answers, mm -hmm. which is fine. I wonder if it's going to turn out to burn him at the end as he sort of, like, runs out of real estate and goes like, oh, wait, damn it, where did all my cards go? Uh, uh, or what am I actually going to play in my main 23? We'll see. That doesn't usually happen to the white deck. I'll say no, it, there's, there's so many picks. Um, yeah. yeah. Scott getting uh, the second Hall Breacher. Which is perfect. We love the Narset. I mean, kind of. Love-ish the Narset. 
She's probably in the right spot here. But at this point, yeah, it seems like everyone's kind of filling out. I feel like this is a nice spot where people, if they pick up fetch lands that they can use, right. kind of find themselves in a nice spot. Now, Steven is playing full Abzan here, right? He's now, he the was the Hexdrinker's first green card? Hexdrinker's the first like green card, yes. Looks like it was, perfect. Now, do you think he really missed out on not having more sack outlets to go along with his Ajani plus Luris cat combo? I don't think you need, I mean, things will die for Ajani. I think it's fine. Mm. I mean, uh, you've seen the modern lists currently that play like the Goblin Bombardment to go with. Uh, I do like that. To go with the Ajani. Yeah, it's uh, honestly, it's very hot. It's one of my favorite modern interactions that I've seen in a very long time. And I think it could be coming very soon to a VRD near you. That makes sense. I mean, especially with how we've seen whatever that stupid red goblin is, the three drop that just kills people. Mm. Broadside Bombardiers. Like, I feel like that kind oh, of yeah. is a better oh, version yeah. of the same idea. A hundred percent. Uh, Bombardier I mean, is such a stupid go, card. Card could go great together. Bombardier is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. One Abrupt Decay, thirteenth pick. That's about right. Um. Yeah. You know, you can usually float it forever. I mean, people don't take like multi-pipped black green cards. It's no. Kind of wild. But, yeah. You know, average around twenty-four. Ooh, interesting. Mobile? Honestly, it could be higher. It could be. be. Higher. Yeah. I mean, he takes Mox Opal. Who else is on that? Maybe Brandon? Maybe Steven? I don't know. Nobody else is really in that world. No, not really. I mean, Brandon would have to be the next closest one, but no, he's not taking it anytime soon. He did kind of snipe that Archon of Myria, though, and that's probably what you see when Daniel is picking all these sideboard cards, is a card like Archon that totally. would probably otherwise make his deck. It is a very good card. He misses out on it. That's going to be a late Caracas, I'm not going to lie. Totally. Caracas, Caracas, is, Caracas is great. Oh, nice. Holy cow, and it just keeps getting better. I know a lot of people are talking about it just being a really miserable card to play against in Vintage Cube. Not oh, okay. necessarily for power level reasons, but just for play pattern reasons. It's a horrendous magic card. Uh, it's um, super fun. Everyone likes it. It's just like Stasis. <laughs> uh, you know, probably plays well with Stasis, to be True. honest. Uh, mind Twist it's is a fine. I can see Sam digging Mind Twist. Yeah, it's yeah, really weird. 100%. Yeah, I'm a little interested to see how Dan plans on using it. I mean, if you get some mon if you play like a turn two Grim Monolith and turn three, you just take their whole hand with Mind Twist. Yeah, good. just like has turn he taken one... Basalt and Grim Monolith yet? Uh, he, he, took, he took Mana or Mana Vault, so you can right. go turn one Mana Vault, turn two Dark Ritual, Mind Twist their entire hand. It's pretty good. Now, I'm a little skeptical that no one else should be picking Grim Monolith and Basalt Monolith at this point. Grim, it's yes. Very Basalt's very bad. Uh, I mean, Basalt's not that bad. Basalt, listen, you can't be casting your Nissa who shakes the worlds out here <laughs> without having some big old mana rocks, okay? All right, so Sink into Stupor is an incredible the, card. The, I didn't know where it was going to oh, fall, yeah. and this feels even late for it at this point. That card's just very good. Basking yeah, Blue Scale gonna probably those, shouldn't like... be here. <laughs> No, I think Steven's pretty far off the rocker as far as just, like, I think he wanted to get in those, you know, 14, 15 picks for the fans. True, but, but there's um, also, there was a lot of table talk about, like, Blade of the Blood Chief. Um, somebody else was talking uh, about it, so he's like, I need to grab this to, to make sure I, Sam doesn't take it, I think, because it could work in our deck. That's funny. Now, uh, not to take away from this draft too much, but the, ab the small ball creature combo Abzan deck of, like, Here's all my little different shitter creatures. Think like Heliod, Walking Ballista, mm -hmm. Basking Brood Scale, uh, Ivy Lane Denison, all these different like duders that just sort of like combo off. Between all the Maliras and Persists and Undyings of the world, it's like you take any three Abzan colored creatures, you put them on the field, and they probably make some kind of infinite. Steven has tried um, that deck like three times, and it's never worked out that I've seen. It's uh, I, I, I believe it could happen, but. I think it probably involves like worldly tutor or something weird. Like people keep trying it and it keeps just not working. The three card combos are too hard to work, even though they, you're right. There's the combo with all of them in any kind of combination. That's what I was kind of, I'm a little curious because I wonder. It just dies to doom blade is the problem. Sure. But I, I would think the idea would be you could then just flop you know, they remove some of your stuff, and you just flop anything else onto the field, and that probably also makes an infinite combo. You just go from there. His idea of using it along with a Luris Companion deck makes it 
very limited in the scope and scale because you can't play three drop creatures which is kind of brutal yeah like you're taking away all your heliod combos you're taking away um you can still play malira but you can't play as many persist creatures you can still play some sack outlets but you can't play all the sack outlets Just some different things like that i wonder if it's too handicapping no maybe it sounds like what you're kind of saying is it doesn't <laughs> Kind of, it does, doesn't really matter if it's a handicapping. It's not very good in the first place. So. I have not seen it be good. I'd be excited to see it. Uh, I'd be excited to see it too. It'd Witch Enchanter fun. seems really cool. I like that card a lot. Mm, yeah, that's going to be another one that's probably going to slink up and up and up and up on the white uh -huh. creature tier list. Um, Dark all Depths the, all also announcing a plan. Yeah, yeah. And this makes uh, some amount of sense with some of the things Sam's got going on. Not really a channel card. but uh, you know. <laughs> All you need is 30 mana. <laughs> as long as you get that quick 30 on there you know? <laughs> um the brazen borrower you know, was great here the that's a late brazen borrower yeah oh very late brazen borrower especially with so many people sort of touching on that mid-rangey blue sort of space if Probably i'm steven right here hug. i i know it messes up your luris thing but man nadu would be so tempting you already have you have the uh you have the stone forge you already have all this equipment mm -hmm. stuff going on just mm -hmm. man yeah. Throw Shuko in there, go to get some lunch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, also, very nice with like Sylvan Safekeeper is a very yeah. like the current vintage cube on Moto has Sylvan Safekeeper and Nadu, and that's kind of it. You have like Lightning Greaves theoretically to go to pop off of it, but uh, you're very much just playing the game of you know. I hope uh, I hope I get my like two cards together. And Nadu's kind of a fun one. I mean, yeah. yeah. Kinda, uh, okay, so, so the reason I don't like that Pyroblast way back there is because look where Red mm -hmm. went, right? Like, it, it, with two copies yeah. of the same card, the fact that you can just, if somebody takes one, you're like, okay, well, I know they're not, they don't need the other one. I can just wait for a long time and take it 10 picks later. Yeah, totally agree. Brilliant uh, Lutri here, I will say. Mark did a great job there. Lutri, very late. I mean, my God, how how does that happen? Lutri's so powerful. I mean, you do have to play around the companion role, which is tough. Uh, yeah, because you can't have two of the same basic <laughs> deck, right? No, you you can't you can't have it's each an online card, so it's literally oh, no wow. restriction at all. Oh wow, brutal! It's, oh it's my gosh, so Ooh. silly! Ooh. Wow, you can really just do it all then, huh? Ooh, yeah, wow. I like this chalice from uh, card now, even though it's like probably not going to hit very many things. It shuts down the ones a lot. Now he doesn't have ancient tomb, right? Correct, so, ancient tomb he takes and city of traitors. No, city of city uh, city of traders also went. I think. I think both of the soul lands went like two in a row. Oh, ooh, yikes. I thought uh, way back here. I'd be a very early city of traders. It'd be a little weird. But, ancient tomb. Um, oh no, maybe I thought the mana vault. I'm sorry. Sure. Yeah. Well, ancient tomb definitely goes a lot lower than uh, our city of traders goes a lot lower than ancient tomb, as it should. It's not not a, nearly as good of a card to just slam on like turn one or two. Yeah, that's fair. Um, well, it could be okay, and Daniel might be even more interested in it now since his options for fast man are so limited. If he had a second Mox, if he had uh, a, uh, an Ancient Tomb, like these kinds of things really help him play all these three mana creatures that he's trying to play. Bob um, has fallen so far down to 18th pick. Yeah, so you probably could have floated it as long as you wanted, to be honest. Uh, I mean, there's always a chance that Cody takes it because he's playing this sort of Grixis, uh, Grixis Delver shell. Yeah. And he takes the Vein Ripper. Now, was this one of his reanimator targets? I think it's got to be. I, th I think he's kind of doing the like Grave Titan, like fair reanimator stuff. Interesting. And uh, do dead. We Vein... Do we think Vein Ripper is a good card for that like macro strategy? It sounds kind of weak to me, but maybe there's oh, some loop that... with sacking creatures and bringing them back that I'm not seeing. Mm, sure, like some kind of like World Gorger Dragon animate dead. I mean, I guess you can't now. Animate that's gone. Necromancy. Yeah, but is, is there some like I can just like cast a card from the graveyard for zero mana somehow, and then sack uh, it off to a Goblin Bug like Ash Nods or in Grave Crawler. Yeah, like that kind of thing. Maybe like that. Yeah, maybe. At that point, you are straying into very far. Like, hey, here's my five mana contraption that I'm putting together. Plus my six mana payoff. Yeah. Consult. Uh, kind of a wild one. Consultation. Uh, and this is the just the two card fast oracle thing, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Classic. You can play it uh, the fairway if you want to like party like it's 1995 and you're Mike Judge. But <clears throat> for any of our or viewers who might not be that familiar with the fast oracle combo, it's kind of like the main, probably like the front running combo of vintage rotisserie draft. 
you play Demonic Consultation for one mana, you name a card that is not in your deck, it exiles your whole deck, and you play Thassa's Oracle for two mana, and even if you have no Devotion to Blue, you win the game. Yep. Classic three mana, two colors, win the game on turn one combo. It's very good. Uh, yeah. You just need like a Mox, a Lotus, a Ritual, something. Takes very little. Uh, and our friend Jeff Blyden obviously has informed us that the best card to name is that you are already dead. You are already dead. Boom Bay. Uh, the Chase Mind Sculpt is a bad card, but I have a mind or whatever it's called. Uh, mana, mana. Why would you think Chase the Mind Sculptor is a bad card? It was the best card in Magic for it so was. long. And it How seemed really that? good to use Mana Drain Mana to cast it, which is why I drafted it. But I don't mm, really think it's good. I like that. Everybody Lives is the answer to Thassa's Oracle, I believe. Okay, I like that. It's a little... Now, here's the thing. If you're Scott, are you like, man, I better take Everybody Lives now that I know someone's going to try to win with that Thassa's Oracle? I mean, I think or... I think it is. I think it's like, I need a sideboard answer to all this combo nonsense. Because he like has the mm. creature control pretty well taken care of, and artifacts, and... He has a That's true. Tutor lined up. His overall plan is to just play like a hard control deck, right? Exactly, yeah. Just so blue light control. Angel's Grace, is Angel's Grace not better here because it's got split second and everything? Uh, this he doesn't really keeps need your creatures the alive. In the sure. Does he need to keep his creatures alive? Is that kind of a part of his strategy, do you think? I don't know. Probably. Yeah, I think Angel's Grace seems better, odd. but maybe I'm wrong. It's a little odd. It's a little odd to me, but uh, maybe he's planning on taking both. Who knows? Uh, though, if a uh, small caveat of vrd strategy for you guys if you're thinking about which card to pick the one that's like 20 years old that everyone's definitely seen played in all kinds of formats before uh pick that one for or pick what that one first because as soon as you take the weird obscure new one yeah uh universes beyond card that no one's ever seen before everyone will be like oh what about that other one right i don't understand good, this ever uh, cool choice i guess you can cast it off of channel the world anew yeah yeah I can see you're like, oh, I've got like Liliana, and then I've got the Emrakul, and I'll discard it, and like, boom, boom. But you're what, channeling for the six minute of Right, you, how else are you getting six colorless? Yeah, that's a little sketchy, I think. That's a little odd. It's a little strange. Tidebinder's a great card. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Probably one of the better new blue cards we've seen in the last set or two. Yeah. Um, Lorien Revealed, another one, same, same vein. Valia, Exuberant Shepherd. Now, do you know Daniel very well? I don't. Is he a Death and Taxes player in Legacy, do you think? I have to imagine. Anybody that's drafting Mono White in VRD, I feel like they have uh, to be pretty tapped into the scene. But I don't, I don't know for sure. He's definitely... I mean, he's doing a good job picking all the new cards that are, like, quite good, and he's drafting some of the... Yeah, no. The nice, like, he's got the Ephemerate Solitude stuff. He's got some nice stuff going on in his deck, you know? It's certainly totally. nothing bad. He's a fan of Mag... He's a friend of Magnon who... Uh, this is his first draft, but, yeah, I think he's, like... He picked a strategy, and he is in it. Now, was Brandon the one who had picked the Mox Diamond earlier in this draft? Uh, yes, Brandon is not in the Mox Diamond. Now, I'm... I know he's staying Boros. and good mm -hmm. on him for being... But for the boy howdy, would I be bummed out that I don't have Ren and Six to go along with my Dragon Rage Channeler and Mox Diamond. Yeah. Boy howdy. Ren and Six is sweet, though. Uh, Magnan did not know how Tainted Pact worked and registered a deck that wouldn't work with Tainted Pact. So he... Oh, no. Did he have two of like the same basic or something? Yeah, he thought it was not land. So we, we let him uh, change it to make the, the deck work. Hilarious. Was yep. he just like playing random basics that like do not tap for colors of mana in his deck? No. Or did he just cut land? He cut lands and he, he got it to work out. And his snow covers are free, right? So he's able to do that. Mm -hmm. So Okay, that makes sense. Now, this flash kind of bit you a little bit, right? Because you had kind of seen I yourself was super pissed. as maybe picking it. Yeah. yeah. Now, I feel like that's a very, like, undrafted card for VRD. I exactly. I feel like it's not a card that people go to very often. Yeah, I mean, it's been drafted seven times out of the last 28. Yeah. It's a weird one, especially with how popular and how good it's been in Vintage Rotisserie Draft. Ever since its inclusion, a few uh, iterations of the Moto Cube uh, back... Man. It has been very popular and very, very powerful. You're telling me. I, I, I was excited for it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little interesting that we haven't seen it be more popular uh, in this format. But. Agreed. Uh, then we've got a little Zuranor balance action. I like okay, the Caustic so... Bronco a lot, we'll say. Oh, Caustic Bronco is nice. We love the Bronco. Are mm -hmm. you kidding me? Um, I'm a big fan, though he does not have access to Brainstorm, Mr. Hagen, obviously. 
And he doesn't have access to Sensei's Top either, which is like a card he could have accessed in his Luris deck. So he maybe missed out on that a little bit. I also like the balance. Scott probably could, would have grabbed balance if he had thought about it. It's too late for him. Mm. Yeah, I feel like this is kind of a Brandon move to put a balance Zurin Orb in your otherwise yeah. red-white aggro deck. Yep. Uh, do you know if he played both of these cards in his he deck did. or not? He did. He played both of them in the main deck. I, I'm almost positive. Let me double check that. That is spectacular. Brandon, 10 out of 10. Yep. Never <laughs> no change. Notes. Uh, yeah. Very, very sort of Brandon thing to do there. Kind of funny. Azurin Orb um, was Scott not in the main deck. Adawara. Balance was. Oh, thank God. At least, you know? And you know what? I'm sure at least one time he, like, dumped his hand to play his big creature uh, you know, Scott or someone killed it, and then Brandon just went, okay, well, I guess neither Let's of us will have any cards in our hand. Yeah. <laughs> I have, like, two pieces, I have, like, two moxes in play, and we'll just uh, go to go back to nothing. This Academy, I um, pick Scott... 23, jeez. Yeah. Seems like, again, some of these cards are just, it feels like, what I'll say is, like the monoliths, this feels like a spot where, when you get this deep into the draft, and you see that they're just unaccessed, you're like, Okay, is there really nothing I could be doing with this? Well, like, Grim is, Monolith got taken 14th, no... so that one that one isn't gone. Right, right, right. I just mean it oh, could yeah. have been gone, you know, maybe a little earlier than that, sure. in fact. Um, but then, uh, cards like Academy, I mean, what, no one's interested in doing some tireless tracker, you know, make lots of clues, uh, what's the forensic whatchamacallit guy? Or just like, Who's it? Was that new um, Tamio? Like she's pretty good with it. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, I have so many options. It's a little, little odd to me that we're just seeing people kind of pass up some stuff. Oh, and then Steven loses his Goblin Bombardment. Now he can't combo it with a Johnny. Did he make mention to you? I mean, I suppose he's in Abzan, not in uh, Mardu. But yeah, I don't think he was so he playing on red. Thinking about Bombardment. No. What if you thought about four color? You know, you just pay, take, take uh, Mana Confluence, take City of Brass. Play every color under the sun. Those cards are Everybody good. Everybody loves to play five color aggro. I like this bone crusher. Yeah, Brandon's list is looking super hot. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I feel like he's trying to get away from just having a bunch of creatures in his deck. Like, that yeah. would be unsatisfactory for young Brandon. And he thinks to himself, I need to be doing something a little bit more clever. I'll put this March of Otherworldly Light in my deck and I'll put these, these combo cards in my deck and things. Um,. Do you think you'd be better off just playing large creatures? I don't know what March of Other really light. I'm pretty down on that card, but uh, he, he also thought you just had to reveal them. He didn't think you had to exile them. So that's uh, we found that out in one of our matches. Um, oh. But yeah, other awesome than that, I like card, I like yeah. his picks a lot. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, that would be a little bit of a different sort of yeah. space. Astral that's a late, late Seiju. Great. You are getting so many late cards here. It's You're true. getting so many gifts really late Paseju, and like anyone could have taken that. Probably would have been better than a few of the cards that Sam's picked at this point. Yeah. And we're cool. I'm pretty happy about that one as well. Oh, man. And actually, Steven should be so burned by that Paseju pick. Like, talk yeah. about premium ways to interact in your Luris deck. Are you kidding me? True. Oh, my God. Must Gold be Vein burned. Hydra. I'm not a fan of this card, but Brandon played it once. I know, I know Brandon is. And that, he's not. I think he's off it now. probably means that Sam has heard its its praises <laughs> being sung uh, it's true i, I don't no. think i think brandon's off this card as well though even though he was excited about it when it first came out oh really you know i wish it didn't make the tokens tapped i yeah. understand why it has to because of all the combo potentials but if it didn't have that part there'd be, be so many fun combos you could do with it you yeah. know it would be like oh it'd be such a cute little way to do it monastery uh, mentor oh, restricted and vintage but gets taken 26th it's about right. It's yeah. not very good. Yeah. Honestly, I you don't think it's very good. I think it's it requires a lot of work to make it good. Wow. I was about to say, I think this card's probably massively underrated uh, for how incredibly good it is. The creature decks want to go I... wide, and the those decks don't run as many non-creature spells. Like you kind of need to be in the list Brandon's talking about, right? Speaking of the like, I want to play a red white deck but i need to play things that are not creatures so i can feel clever this is a way to do it but most people don't want to do that they don't want to feel clever they just want to win 
you don't have to play creature decks to play a monastery mentor. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, you want you need to play, but all of your moxes and all of your cantrips and all of your fast mana, like all of that stuff, turns out. That's that's why it's so good in vintage, right? I mean, it's it's so good in vintage because. Uh, you, yeah, but you play like one mox value. in this format, right? I, mean, I don't know. It's just it's harder. It's harder to make it work. I'm not saying it's bad. I just I think it's up right about twenty fifth. This feels right to me. Interesting, interesting. I like Wrath uh, of the Skies. I would great. if uh, if there were some dedicated monastery mentor shooters out there. I think we would see this card just absolutely demolishing people's drafts. Um, it is one of those kinds of cards. Uh, fits well into combo decks. Fits well into like fits well into combo decks, and it gives you a a whole other dimension that your deck can play on. I really like it. That's um, fair. Wrath of the Skies is a newer one that's very very powerful. Yep, I like it a lot. Uh, Mutated Cultist is the combo with Dark Depths. That's another mm, copy of whatever that when black you creature spell, was. Remove all counters from to one target permanent. Eh, love it. Yep, it also and kills planeswalkers. Oh, fun. Okay, and then you can use it to cast a 10-drop, so it's like another channel. Boom! Yeah, yeah. there you go. You can cast oh. your cool after Busted. making Dark Steps. My lord. I take Energy Flux, and then proceed never to draft it. Never to draw it, I mean. And Vexing Bobble was terrible. We love that. Uh, Vexing Bobble, yeah, it seems a little narrow, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, energy Flux, we love that. But it is a little awkward against like the Time Vault decks of the world, maybe. Just because they might not have enough random shit or material lying around to make it make it hurt, you know? Yeah, Flux is fine. Um, it's, like, I think the second best sideboard card, so I, I still like it no matter what. But mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. for me, it's Veil of Summer, Energy Flux, Pyroblast. Sure, okay. Uh, I like to see the Touch of the Spirit realm going. That's kind me of a too. fun one. It's also good because it probably can actually be channeled in his deck to, to good effect. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, so you see the restoration like, angel right afterwards, right? Like it's it's yeah. happening. Yeah, you kind of need the both of them, right? It, it doesn't make a ton of sense to pick one and not the other. I would imagine. Uh, maybe I don't know. I think restoration angel could be fine, but it, you can, that one wants a combo. Yeah. You're probably more inclined to take restoration angel and not touch, but uh, yeah, having more interactive options uh, in your decks, you know, usually something I tend to advocate for. Cryptic Command so is like so it. hard to, to make good. It's like, at best, okay. Really? I think. I don't know. It's just four mana is a lot. I, when I see Cryptic Command, I think that is a card that loops. That is a that is an engine that will loop until you win the game. Put Mystic That's Sanctuary right. in your deck. Fetch it out. Cryptic Command. Tap your opponent's team. Bounce your Mystic Sanctuary. Play Mystic Sanctuary. Put it on top of your deck. Boom, 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 boom. Can't Snapcaster lose. Mage, yeah. Brandon now has three uh, initiative creatures after this caves. Mm -hmm. We love that. Uh, we don't see a ton of splitting of the initiative creatures, right? Usually someone will take no, them. Usually there's two. All of them. There's almost always two players that are doing it. I think Cardinal got one of them as well. Uh, oh, interesting. But yeah, traditionally there's two initiative decks at every table. Uh, I don't oh. know if that has settled down, given that we haven't had as many of these firing. But back when there was like one firing every two weeks, that's how it usually work out. Wow, interesting. That's they're, they're uh, really good. Sounds like a lot, but hey, you know, good for them. Uh, creatures, uh, creatures were running the day creatures. for a while. Nothing better than your opponent taking the initiative and you taking it from them. Calamity's Wake feels bad, but I guess if you're worried about storm decks. Yeah, not uh, not knowing if this is. Ugh. It shuts oh, off your so own sorry. stuff uh, too. Yeah, I'm very skeptical that this is, like, the card. But, uh... Infinite, cr infamous Cruel Call is really powerful. It's slow and Yeah, that's whatever. a that's a very cool new one. It's cool. Uh, was this the first time it was drafted? Yes. Um, also Jack yeah, Rabbit. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's one that's uh, popped up in the Vintage Cube, and I've played it a couple times, and I gotta tell you, not impressed. Uh, I'm also I not. thought People it was when it came good. into play. I thought it was when it came into play you made guys. Uh when it attacks instead and i can't help but feel like uh it's so fucking slow <laughs> it just doesn't do anything uh, yeah. fast enough it's inevitable so I'm a little, hmm. it kind of reminds uh, me too. what's that form i read a uh, hero of blade hold it feels like that to me oh sure well i am a big hero blade hold advocate so i guess i can't talk that much shit i usually like to say 
every time everyone talks about any of these four mana initiative creatures, I say, you know, it's a four mana creature that if it sticks in play for a turn or two, you will win the game. Hero of Bladehold. It and is. no one plays that card, so. Psychic Frog is criminally late here. That card should be way higher, even though it is two colors. Oh, yeah. It's been like a premier breakout star of like several formats now. I mean, yep. it's like completely absurd. It um, is going to be a top 15 pick, guaranteed, in the next VRD, I'm sure. Everyone's been, uh, you know, rabble rousing because uh, they wanted grief banned in Legacy. And it's like, guys, there are blue black decks out there centered around Psychic Frog that don't even play grief anymore. They don't care. Like, Frog is actually that good. Yeah. I, I think that, I don't know, I think the ban is still right, but that's a different conversation, so. Right, yeah, 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 no, not that it's bad, but it's like, I wouldn't necessarily expect that these blue-black decks will be less uh, good now just because Grief is gone. Agreed, yeah, that makes sense. Bitter Ordeal, uh, very powerful if you can get it for like four. Uh, yeah, maybe. It's a pet card for certain, it, it could definitely hit some people's decks pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, if you resolve something like that against Daniel... Um, or maybe even against someone like Scott, you could really ham hamper uh, their overall machinations. Kind yep. of a fun one. Tiny Bones, I like a lot. That card's very strong. A lot of this Ludor type stuff going on. Or uh, not Ludor, Ophidian stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Um, Seed of the Synod. You know, nice. interesting card. Which one? Guts, Gut was blowing up. Oh, uh, Gut's very good, yeah. Not, uh, a, a very short time ago, that card was getting so popular uh, in Cube. And I don't know that we've really seen like the full power of that card be unleashed on VRD yet. Uh, we've, it, it gets played pretty regularly. Let me take a look. Nope, I'm wrong. It got picked 3 out of 28 times. Every time I see it picked, though, I just like, yep, that card will kill me in 3 turns. So it kind of feels a lot like the other 3 drops, like the, the 2 different goblins that pump out tokens. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know Lelia, like what's up? You know what I like it with what a Johnny. Yeah, that makes sense. A Johnny call. It's, is it Caller of the Pride? It's not Caller of the Pride. That's I don't know. Whatever the new one is. But which, whichever one it is. But you have to be playing uh, red yeah. for that. So Super sorry. Hot, hot fire. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> who would ever want to play a crazy color combo like red white? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I right, fellas? Fortress Foundry is a very cool card, uh, and we all misread it and thought that it lets you cast the card every turn for five mana and tap it as opposed to putting it back in your graveyard ah. so uh mm. it seemed like a combo card and it turns out not to be that great of a combo card you can actually right. cast so, off a thing so if i understand uh during the draft scott was using this to uh combo people with uh it wasn't it was time walk time vault. time walk right yeah. right i was gonna say it wasn't time vault right it was so he was thinking he could use it to exile time walk and then just go forever correct you you pay four mana up you play this you tap this and a, another mana to cast time walk take your extra turn tap five tap this to cast time walk and then do that every turn but it turns out that when you use it that way uh you only get to cast time walk twice you have to put it back in your graveyard the second time still not a terrible thing no now could you have used it it needs to be exiled with this right it can't just correct. be in exile from anywhere damn yeah. if only you could if only you could use like rest in peace or something with it. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things that I think you could do a lot of things to make it work, uh, but in the end, it's probably not worth it. No, oh, now that we know Cody's that. Getting... Cody's got to just be getting a little too cute here with his laughing Jasper Flint, right? I mean, that his card doesn't deck... even seem bad. No, his entire but... deck is uh, outlaws. So if you look back at everything, okay. every card in his deck is an outlaw. Okay. So that's like cute. that's that's what he's building it around. Uh, Psychic Frog, not an outlaw. Is that true? Yes, that is true. Tough, tough stuff. Tough stuff. Yeah, fair point. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I just the card doesn't look bad. Uh, it feels way too cute to me too. But it, it might be a little too cute. It might be a little too cute. It's, it's not, not, not that it's not powerful, but it might be a little too cute. It's kind of like when he drafted blue black ninjas and blue black like flyers, uh, flash creatures. I mean, I think he likes to kind of like oh, go sure. really hard into a theme and see where the edges are. And I think that there's yeah. something here. I don't think it's necessarily this far. But I think that he like he's very good at kind of opening up new areas of to draft. Yeah. And he does it by this we way. Should, we should all aspire to such great heights. Yes, as opposed uh, to just drafting boring uh, show and tell Ulamogs. Mm, 100%. If I was drafting boring show and tell Ulamogs, oof, I would probably just hang it up at that yep. point. Agreed. Tough stuff. Uh, Magnin continuing to draft my favorite for deck in the format. 
Magnan. Oh, yeah, yeah, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, yep, this looks like a... You, it has to burn you a little bit, sitting next to it's someone doing the exact sad. thing that you always want to do. The fact that the LED was gone made me feel not as bad, because I think it's, like, hard to make happen, but... Sure, sure, yeah, I get that. Um, Sam continuing with her wild and wacky black-green mm -hmm. channel deck. I love that art on Gush. That's kind of cool. That's a that's the new like secret layer one. Yeah, it's the mystery, mystery booster, books. and I hate it. Um, but mystery booster, yeah. I like the frame. Are you not I hate a big the fan art. of the future site? Oh wow, really? You don't like that art? Gush has art. There is one art for Gush. <laughs> no, the, yeah. Well, now there's two, and that's gorgeous. Look at it with the rainbows. Yeah, it's sweet. I don't know. It's not. A, it's not art. the art for Gush. <laughs> really, not being an ally here. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. Chrome host sea truck. So here's an interesting one. Chrome host sea truck. Super light, fine, whatever. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that makes you think, like, wow, I really probably could have done something with Solarian Academy. Uh, yeah, agreed. Kind of a bummer. Ooh, Stephen drafts his signature combo, Chain of Smog with Removal Apprentice. Yeah. I gotta get in it's... Stephen's ear a little bit more and get him to draft more Abrupt Decays and less Chain of Smogs. Those, those cards are good. They just require you to have them set up, and his deck doesn't have a lot of tutors in it. It has, like, two. Mm -hmm. And unlike previous iterations, he's not going to have six mana Liliana to also combo with it. So. True. Uh, Brandon has to fairish protection and balance, which is pretty good together. We love that. Yeah, absolutely. So you what? All your cards phase out, and then you balance, and your opponent has to sack all their cards. Yep. They have. Yeah, they lose cool. all their creatures and all their lands. Do you know if you played Teferi's protection? The main deck sure did. That one I know for wow, sure. Wow, interesting. I. It's, it's like also a fine card. Yeah. Be bit of a toughie but if you do think that scott's gonna be trying to destroy all your stuff and or you just think, somebody oh, uses the kill spell right myself. like the floor is pretty good yeah. you're just like oh yeah you try to like wasteland me i'll have various protection mm -hmm. um sure the, the, the floor is a one like, for the, one the practicality of that happening in in brandon's deck is like very low right because yeah what is he going to be holding up all of his mana with on a turn where his opponent's going to wasteland him that's a little i just mean at some point that card work. will trade for another card and like that's the floor for it it's, i'm not saying it's a sure. good I, case I got you, I got you. uh yeah okay i got you that's fair uh won't argue but uh maybe not the direction i'd be going in my super fast initiative beat down deck yeah it, it's there for the balance for sure mm -hmm. which is a cute combo uh, we we love we love a cute combo. We stand a cute combo, cute combo here. We sure do. Uh, I like this library for Scott. He's the only deck that wants it, but it's very good in his. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And like that's one of those you know you pick it up very late, but it's always just kind of a nice one to nice one to have. Athari is another. Uh, as long as we're talking about giant things that cost too much mana that win the game in two turns, there's another one. Mm, Athari is uh, nice. We love Athari. It's fine. Uh, I'm personally. Especially in this kind of deck where you want to cast those big, like, three, four, five mana creatures, Athari is peak. I think uh, it is a one mana more expensive hero blade hold a lot of times, and that's okay. Um, maybe, but, like, if the field has a little bit more uh, mid rangey creature decks, like, Athari really shines. Like, that's true. When its lifelink ability is good, yeah. it's really hard for a card to be better than Athari. And if you get uh, to attack, if, if it gets to attack, it's like, very good. Yeah, when you're racing, really, really nice. True. When you're gold fishing, a lot less, a lot less powerful. Still, like, we'll kill them, but you know, like you said, costs a little more mana than you have comfortably accessing, unless you're like literally playing with Black Lotus. I think Divert is a very cool card. I think it is not very good. Mm. Uh, one of my best friends, the whole time I was playing competitive Magic, had a real thing for Divert. He played it like all of his Legacy decks, uh, and he was a. Uh, legacy world champion so yeah, very there's another one like that that's a force spike action. unless they pay it's a force spike and it draws you a card i think so it starts with a d i always mix up those cards i don't know oh, um yeah mm -hmm. it's not divest Revitalizing, revitalizing repast is a very good card i think i've seen that drafted in a few different decks like it honestly fine. feels like real miss for steven to not have it but um yeah, that's maybe fair. Maybe it, was, it wasn't on his radar, or maybe he really thought no one else was going to pick it. Even Super late cradle. So. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, which is a little odd, because you'd think there are a couple decks at the table that might be able to use cradle. But, Agreed. Um, like, I would certainly have wanted to try to see if I could play it if I was Steven. And, and probably, probably Sam. Yeah, and Sam seems like the, just the kind of quirky, eclectic Honestly, card that you'd be It's good for. in Brandon's list. 
Um, oh, yeah, I can see it. Um, uh, probably, it, it kind of depends on whether or not you think you need mana after you've resolved your first creature or two. Um, he has sure, I guess he has all the soul lands, or he has a soul land as well. I don't know, I think it's a soul land most of the time, though. Yes. Just not a soul land in your opening hand a lot of the time. Yeah, right? true. Like, look at your opening seven, you're like, I need to make three mana on turn two. Yeah, like, it won't do that. A little awkward. Oath of Druids into the Flood Maw, great combo. Sneak attack, that. terrible card, no to play. <laughs> really just uh just not being very charitable towards your uh towards your sneak and show strategy here, huh? Yeah, it's not supposed to be a sneak and show, it's supposed to be a flash and tell. <laughs> That's true. Um Oh, Evolution Witness is a card I really like. I actually could see like this one. card being quite good, uh, especially in, like, Steven's deck. Like, if he wasn't playing Lurus Companion, uh, Evolution Witness is a pretty cute one. Um, yep. There are certainly, like, a bunch of different redundancies that you can work in. Evolution Witness feels like a nice upgrade from literally Eternal Witness. That's probably been the best version of itself for the last, what, 20 years? 15 years? Wow, yeah, you're right. It's also very good with revitalizing repast. Oh yeah, hundred uh, percent. It would be great with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Uh, well, it was like a nice card that Stephen could go along with. Um, it's also just a really nice one to just like you play it out and you kind of force your opponent to do some very awkward like sorcery speed removal spell stuff. That makes sense. Otherwise, they have a hard time. Like that was what came up in limited all the time. Was you would sit there with the mana open and your opponent would kind of. Oh, I don't know what to do. Well, same thing. Yeah, I wonder witness because you don't um, actually want the thing on turn three or whatever anyway with Eternal Witness. So you want you want it later, and this lets you just store it. Yeah, it would be a little bit better if she had like a strip mine or something, which you know she has like the fast bond and, and different things like that. Even if she just had access True. to Wasteland or some extra fetch lands and stuff, probably be a little bit better in that case. But you know, again, we all miss out on some things. I wonder if Sam's played um, MH3 Limited. Uh, oh, that makes all. sense. The nesting grounds. Evolution witness and nesting grounds. Yeah, that's a cute kind of a cute. thing in that format. Steven takes sadistic uh, leave as well, which is a combo with the stupid little lizard thing. Whenever any creature is put into a graveyard from play, put a counter on him. Yes, that's very cool. Now, his deck kind of relies on having some kind of blood artist in play, right? Not. Uh, I no, mean, you just make the lizard can... giant. Interesting, but then the landmark. lizard doesn't have uh, trample or anything, right? It's got like the the classic Emrakul that can be blocked by squirrels kind of thing going on. It does. Um, I think there's other. He can make it fly. Uh, there's like there's a lot of ways they can kill people. Like he did it a lot. But okay, interesting. I think there's, I mean, there's, there's also several ways. Field... You get infinite mana yeah, out of the deal. So. Oh sure 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 yeah that's true infinite colorless mana which is fair which means you can move around the blade all over the place right. Yep. Uh, Does that yeah. Continue to do the I think thing? maybe uh, not actually. No, I don't think so. Maybe because I, I think know. after you move the blade, you can no longer keep making creatures, and you never have more than one creature in play at the same time. But regardless, oh, he missed out on having Chatterfang Squirrel General in his deck. Daggers. Talk about squirrels toppling an Emrakul. That is Cody's uh, CEDH commander. Really? Yeah. It's. Uh, I don't C think it's quite CEDH, of... but it's pretty good. I was gonna say. The C doing a little soft, a little heavy lifting there in the old Chatterfang deck. Chatterfang, I mean, Ooh, it's very good. Oh, yeah, Agate, yeah. This was the 40th pick of the draft? Oh, okay, perfect. Agate Instigator. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever another creature you controls enters, this creature deals one damage to each opponent. It's got Offspring, so you pay two mana and you make a little 1 1 copy of the creature. Uh, so for a total of four mana, you get a 1 1 and a, and a 1 3 copy of this creature. Kind of a cute one. I like it. Um, Both also outlaws. Ah, look, and a rogue and a mercenary. You got some outlaws. You got some Jasper Flint. I like the Coco. Other creatures you control enter with an additional plus one plus one counter on them for each opponent who lost life this turn. Talk about a CDH commander. My God. Right. Yeah, Coco's great. Coco's a great one in these decks. Um, again, would be very good in the slightly larger version of this deck too, where you're not playing Luris Commander and you're just picking up, you know, Heliots and all kinds of other things. Kitchen uh, Trier Praetorian is cool. You can uh, unearth it. Is really hard to familiar with. So it enters the battlefield from a graveyard. You draw two cards, lose two life. Oh wow! So you so cast the card nice unearth to bring it into play. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to paying its unearth cost. Exactly. Which is nice. Uh, but it's also like a two-one flyer for two. Kind of nice. Puts the pressure on. Yeah. It's fail state of like everything's going wrong and my opponent's killing all my stuff. Is you get to reanimate it for five mana and like mold drifter yourself. Kind of mm -hmm. nice. Kind of nice. 
Portal of Phyrexia from Dan, finding the last few things he needs, the the situational tinker targets he might want. Uh, yeah, do I we see like... him pick up Inkwell Leviathan here, do you think? No way. I feel like the picks like 35 uh, through 40 are where Dan Magnan's list uh, like went from incredible to like, okay, now it's good. I feel like there's like, I don't know what they are, uh, but it feels like the, he's taking safe picks now instead of like really directionally oriented picks towards his strategy. Interesting. Um, do Things you like know divest, collective just... brutality. These are all. These just don't feel like cards that are gonna be super important, impactful. Yeah, I'm imagining he's probably got his whole list done, and now he's just picking up like sideboard cards. Yeah. Did he play this Blightsteel Colossus in the main deck? Do you know? I can sure check. I imagine. So here's what I'm gonna say while you check is I imagine it probably didn't see play in the main. It did uh, not. Because and neither did Portal. Uh, yeah, yeah, because these both seem like situationally good tinker targets that right. you might want in your deck. Um, I wonder if Blightsteel Colossus in this case is better than uh, Inkwell Leviathan if you're going to play as a sideboard card. Um, and yeah. I am like 99% sure Inkwell Leviathan would be better here. Because, like, oh, what really? if, if you're looking for something to tinker against, like Scott. You're like, oh, okay, cool. I've got this big, got this big boy to search for, just in it's case my opponent. Though. Yeah, I can see Playing it. a lot of, uh... yeah, even against like, um, I mean, Brand you're probably not going to bring in either of these against Brandon. Uh, well, you'll probably bring in Portal of Phyrexia as opposed to. Um, uh, yeah, against against well, Scott, against you're getting Brandon. you're getting either Bolas Citadel or the One Ring, right? You're not getting a one shot robot, probably. Prop, yeah, probably, and you're certainly not getting Portal. I think you just uh, don't get either. If you're worried about your opponent having just a lot of interaction, and you don't want to go for like literally time vault, um, even in a situation where you think it might go infinite, uh, if your opponent's just holding up a bunch of mana and you're not sure. I don't know what the sudden substitution is for. Is that for me? Is that for Othin? Exchange target control of non-creature spell and target creature. Then the spell's controller may choose new target to one copy. Huh. How odd. What? Do you need to give them one of your creatures? Or give them one of your spells. And take a creature. Okay. So you uh, cast a spell and then cast this and then the trade them. Unplayable. Yeah, it doesn't seem very good to me either. That's four mana. There's no cost reduction on this. That's split second, which is like cute, but what do you... To take one of their creatures, you need to play another spell and then get this on the stack. Like, know. how much mana are you spending? Oh my god. I like Cody's Breach. It's just like a value breach. I really like Steven's Keen Duelist. Um, do you know, can you pay alternate casting costs off of Underworld Breach? Uh, escape, escape cost, no. You the cards escape, the escape cost okay. is the alternate yeah. casting cost. Daggers. I was going to say, you know what I, like, what I would like with, with it more? Fire Blast. But, you know, lies. No. You can't also you also can't pulverize. Sorry. Ugh, daggers. Holy uh, font. Steven tricked me into taking. Uh, and I forgot beautiful. that I had oath. That's because Steven Hagen is a master of the mental warfare. That's true. Everybody knows that. Werefox bodyguard I had never seen before, but it's really cool. Oh yeah, it's a fun one. Uh very, very good in its limited format. I'll say that much. That makes sense. Springheart and Tuko um, getting taken without without Nadu. Yeah. Little interested in that one a uh, little bit of an odd duck there now sam does have guy's cradle or it got picked by she does have it yeah i think so okay no no did uh, dan got it i think i was Card gonna no. say did dan take it from him yeah. oh man that's such a bad beat on sam sam lost a few really important cards in this draft which is a bit of a bummer i really love this um, tabernacle though i should have taken tabernacle and i did not take it Brandon saw that Springheart and Tuco. He said, "Not today, baby." Right, for real. But also oh, against absolutely. against Cardno, right? Just like having having a Tabernacle to play. Mm, sure, yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. That card can come up absolutely huge. I think it might be slightly better against like the red decks than it is the white decks, but still, it basically does the same thing. Yep. Blood Pact target player draws two cards and loses two life. Wait, okay. It's an instant speed, Why which is important. Pact? Really? It's okay. the only it's the only instant speed draw to, uh, in his colors. Mm, okay. The cheapest one, maybe. I'm sure there's more, but. You know, I, not to be that guy, but like, wouldn't you take like village rights or something? You sack a creature, you draw two. One no, no, no. Sorry, he, he wanted to he wanted to answer uh, Thassa's Oracle. Oh, 
cute. Yeah, in response to the trigger, okay. you killed him. Eh. Uh, okay, all right. I'm sold. Fine. Fair enough. This Apple of wanna, Eden is very if you're bad. For Apple of Eden Isu Relic. Don't read it. It's, it's not playable. Okay, I will not read it. That's fair. Uh, I assume a lot of these cards that got picked in the last round here are just sort of funny. Uh, no, no, we're, we're, awesome. these are good. Strict Serenade is incredible. It's probably the best counter spell in my deck. That's not true, but it's probably in the top three. That card should oh, be, yeah, that should be, should be taken in the top twenty, I think. Now, did you already have Swan Song or? Yes, uh, Swan Song's okay. worse though for me. Sure, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Being but able to pay one so mana to counter their Planeswalker on turn two or three. Ah, sorry, there's Swan Song. I knew I got it eventually. Oh, there we go. Uh, between the Strict Serenade, the Swan Song, and the Yorion, it's a real bird-themed uh, pick. It's true. Uh, last picks in the draft here. Kind of interesting. Shared Fate by Daniel. Is this a, is this a It's a pet card. He doesn't play. He brought it in against game. me one time. You just, you know, every once in a while, you, gotta, you just got to throw out a silly one. You know, mm -hmm. a little, little, little goofball. Little like Ulamog. <laughs> Ah, like a little book. We love that. I mean, listen, uh, if she wants to play big colorless creatures, why not? Myth Realized, that's there, a real card. There's a fun magic card. There's a fun magic card. I like that one. Yeah. Um, Basin Ibn Ishak is not very good, I'll also say. I think it can do things. Boston I don't think it's that great. Whenever you cast a historic spell draw card, it can't be blocked this turn. Ability triggers only once each turn. Deals kind of damage to the player. You can put a counter on it. That doesn't sound great, but... I mean, it draws you some cards. I wonder if... Um, I wonder if Steven's really missing out on uh, Chthonian Nightmare, the new recurring nightmare card. That's uh, two mana, you make some energy, and then you can use it like a recurring nightmare. Um, what is he nightmaring like, what? What is he nightmaring? Yeah, just like nightmaring. Uh, I mean, a bunch of his value creatures are great with it, and then also every combo card in his deck. You just basically. like d dump the combo and then get it back? somehow or if your opponent's removing your combo pieces sure. if you have to use them to like block any of your opponent's giant initiative creatures then you you know you're not turning yourself off of comboing across future turns you know the same reason you'd probably have on earth in your deck you know? yeah and anime cool. dead okay yeah you sold me and and with a card like a cursed marauder so like these kinds of decks can find themselves in the situation where like you have like an acidic slime or a cursed marauder or something in your deck mm -hmm. and a card like chthonia nightmare can give you a whole game plan to attack someone's specific strategy so you're playing against brandon or something you bring in your curse marauder you bring your flashback marauder whatever it is and suddenly you're like absolutely mauling every creature they put into play or you're you know putting in your shitter lane destruction creature that's not even very good like acidic slime for instance and you're like blowing up your opponent's lands and keeping them off of ever casting like their five mana planeswalkers St stuff like that i find to be pretty pretty nice and one of the more versatile elements especially if you're playing color combo like abzan you've got some creature tutors you've got like a survival of fittest you've got a green sunsea and something like that it gives you a lot of there are certain ways you can build your like small creature combo decks yeah uh take like a court of calling for example that give you a lot of access to a lot of your stuff and a card like chthonia nightmare can then give you repeated uh usage of these silver bullet creatures that you otherwise would have trouble like accessing. So, In specifically a Luris deck, you've convinced me, but I think Recurring Nightmare is still better most of the time. Um, prob uh, I don't know, man. You can Chthonia Nightmare twice in one turn off four mana. Pretty wild. You can Chthonia. Um, you can Recurring Nightmare Thrag Tusk in a play. I don't know. It's pretty good. <laughs> yes, another Thrag Tusk enjoyer. That's what I'm all about, Mark. Absolutely. Yeah. You know me. I love being Thrag Tusk. They're pretty good. Oh, too funny. All right. Well, this this um, is the this is the draft. Whose deck do you like? Yeah. I. That's a great question. Uh, we do have three I... companions that are going to be played in this draft. Yeah, Yorion is a nice one. I'm gonna go ahead and say if I had to pick one of these decks to play. Oh man, I'm not gonna lie. Some of these look pretty rough. <laughs> Um, Wait, so start there. Which which ones uh, would you be uncomfortable playing? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, okay, this is. Uh, I don't want to be too harsh on anyone. Yeah, I don't want to harsh anyone. We, we don't. We don't need to like complain. Um, People have to play different no, things. No, no. I'm not saying that like yeah, 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 the deck is sure. bad. Just what what would you steer away from and why? Uh, I'm gonna go down the list here. So okay. Cody's deck. Um, I'm feeling like his deck's a little schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. 
a little all over the place. I'd like to see him lean more into the Grixis Delver strategy of like all of these sort of quirky creatures uh, the queen beating down thing. and like using some some uh, nominal interaction to try to slow your opponent down enough. I don't know what his exact final list looked like, but it feels a little bit like a sealed deck. You know, I'd be handed this sheet of cards and I'd be like, okay, get all of this out of here. Let me play this. Let me see how many lands I have to play to make it work. Sure. Um, Steven's deck, I probably would have done a few things differently, uh, but I, lo I love me a Luris plus Black Lotus deck. And I know he had some problems in this draft. I know this draft did not go very well for him, but he does have one of my favorite decks at the table, I think. It looks like something I would draft. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll read off after after you say your analysis of him. Co Cody ended up going 4-3, uh, which feels about right. I think he probably could have gone like 5-3 with 5-2 with us. Um, sure, but he sure. I'm like Yeah, it, it's it ends up being more aggressive and not enough control into my mind, but I could easily be misreading that. It should be more aggressive. I think, it, like you said, it's schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Hagen ended up going 07, which feels criminally under where this deck should perform. I think that just things didn't work out, and that happens sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's just not your day. But I got to tell you, I have a feeling <laughs> the way Mr. Hagen was talking, it sounded like he maybe gave up a little bit. <laughs> uh, maybe. Did some of his I have to believe in my heart that if he was battling with all of his wits and wisdom, yeah, that right. he would have gotten a match win somewhere. <laughs> That's probably true. Uh, but you know what? Maybe he'll maybe he'll uh, message me and he'll say, you son of a... Yeah, then you can have an interview guy. with him and talk about it. Okay, uh, so then Brandon, what do you think about this? The Brandon's deck's nice. Curry Brandon's, deck, Brandon deck, Brandon's deck is probably like one of three that if you get to pick your opening seven every hand, you'll probably like win 98% of your games. Mm -hmm. Um... And there are some decks in this draft that that will not necessarily be the case. Like you could probably pick your opening seven with Scott's deck every game or with Daniel's deck every game, and not necessarily win uh, an overwhelming percentage of your games. But Brandon Brandon's deck has like a really nice top end, and then somewhere along the way, I think it it breaks off. He's probably got like he's probably gonna wind up registering a deck that has like ten cards that I wouldn't want to have in my deck. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and he's probably going to have a bunch of stuff in his sideboard that looks like it could be very useful and practically against this particular table of decks is like, uh, do I really need like these, this Wrath of the Skies or, or these, uh, or these like sideboard cards against That's combo fair. deck number three? Ice Crown Scepter. I mean, you can yeah. lock people out with the Silence Ice Crown Scepter, which happened. Uh, that's funny did he draft like arms chant or anything goofy i mean there's silence something in here sure. yeah he did chant that's it oh he did draft chant. that's funny you can also teferi's protection um, if you want to yeah true um brandon's deck oh, wait, uh, will probably perform but uh yeah i would imagine it's like a five two four three kind of deck like it is a five two and it won the tournament like so brandon won with wow, a five two damn way to go brandon initiative is really good beating people down Brandon is a man of high character and motivation. He finds ways to win the game, and sure. I respect that about him. I've never seen him give <laughs> up a game, which is actually kind of shockingly impressive. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's a motivated individual and uh, very smart and good looking. Also, uh, I like I like Brandon's deck. I'd probably rate it like a six out of ten or something uh, for this particular archetype. Which obviously, it, here's what I'll say about uh, just last last comment about it is. This is a deck that everyone drafts all the fucking time. It, yep. it gets drafted every single draft. And I like that Brandon's trying to do some different stuff, try to work in his own his own flavor and push the boundaries a little bit, play some slick shot show off mentor uh monastery mentor stuff and see how it works as opposed to just trying to draft like the same list of like fifteen creatures over and over and over again. Yep. Just all the three drops. Yeah. So I like that about him. Okay, uh, Scott blew Scott up control. Deck. Scott's deck looks really Scott's deck looks very good. Um, Scott's deck, I would probably give my biggest stamp of approval to across the table. Not to say that it, Daniel's deck prob uh, couldn't be better, but it's not the kind of deck I tend to draft, so I have less strong opinions on it. Um, Scott's deck looks very nice. It looks very um, well thought out, very internally consistent. He looks like he has a game plan. He's ready to try to execute every game. Uh... And at least, uh, I'm not sure. I would have to look at what his deck list looks like to see exactly if if I think he looks like he had all the right answers for everybody at the table. 
Um, obviously, un he unfortunately had the problem come up with this Forger's Foundry where he thought he was. That's fine. Of, For the sake of this tournament, tournament, we're gonna it worked this way, and we just figured it out later. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, which is to say that uh, that kind of thing works works perfectly fine as a win con. Uh, you have a lot of win con, or mm -hmm. you have access to lots of different win cons. Um, yeah, and, and I like Scott's deck quite a lot. I'd probably give it like a seven out of ten, eight out of ten, something like that. I think uh, it looked perfectly serviceable, uh, and I probably like the the issues that I have with it come down to like very specific little card choices, little finicky little things like that. Yeah, things Whether like gush that probably don't need to be in there. That. Yeah, Chrome host yeah. probably isn't yeah. solid. Yeah, anyway, anyway commandeer is not very good, but yeah, I agreed that overall it's pretty solid. Uh, and yeah. he went five yeah, yeah. two. I like it a lot. Oh, nice, great. Yeah. So he uh, lost on breakers. You guys kind of playoffs or no. did you? Uh, okay, we, sure. we, it was late, so we we did breakers, um, which gave Brandon the win. But I, I think it was a, I think it was clear breakers where uh, Brandon had beat both of those two, like both oh, nice. of their. Okay. So, so I think that's why, no. why it was like very easy. No weird triangle stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, that's funny though that Brandon got the uh, got the dub in this draft because that would like make it like the last St. Lotus draft, the red white initiative deck <laughs> yeah, one on true. breakers. This deck, the Red Wing Initiative deck, wins on breakers. Maybe that's the secret. Maybe you just get better tiebreakers when you take the initiative more often. It's got to be it. Mana, so have... Mana Crypt, you know? You pay your dues, and eventually it gives you those sweet, sweet tiebreaker points. We have Sam's Mason Lang special here. Mm. You know what? Um, I'm going to say Sam looks like she's got a lot of, like, two-card combo stuff, a lot of... Uh... uh disparate elements kind of working towards maybe different goals uh which is tricky it's a little tough i i like the side of her deck that she leaned into with lots of channel stuff mm -hmm. uh she did the devoted druid plus luxior thing as another sort of channel um karn's a great card to play with channel uh, mike synth lattice nice nice combo so i like that element of her deck um and I would have liked to see her ignore uh, some of the quirkier cards that she picked, like the Fast Bond and the and the Merit Lodge combo. Yeah, just uh, solidify into one one of the combos as opposed to all this like counter synergy yeah, type stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like if you know your your goal is try to make infinite mana, then just or like make you know ten or fifteen mana or whatever. Just try to do that maybe. Um, I would have been interested to see where she could have pushed uh, the new Emrakul, the discard madness, six, yeah. six colorless man Emrakul. That's a cool card. That's a cool build around, play around card um, that I would have liked to see if she could have made work. Also, Lion's Eye Diamond plus madness cards. Like, Lion's Eye Diamond is such a powerful combo card. Certainly not a card you ever see with some kind of big madness effect. Yeah, Doesn't sadly does not make colorless. Fair. Um, but. I could see that being an interesting element. Same. One of my very favorite interactions with Lion's Eye Diamond has always been Lion's Eye Diamond, land, discard my hand, use on burial rights to bring a big creature back. Oh, uh, cool. I think people did a little bit. Uh, I've drafted it in VRD before. It's super fun. I've had my brother do it to me so, so many times <laughs> in VRD. It's the most tilting thing in the world. That man draws sevens like he's Steven Speck. It's wild pretty <laughs> funny uh but yeah yeah uh yeah so Lion's sam... diamond plus madness cards would be an interesting L, uh an interesting wrinkle to unravel i do think it's her her picks two and three just threw off like four people at the table like we were swearing at her after those because they like <laughs> both of those cards are kind of linchpins for massive si sweeps of archetypes right like of the seven decks i had prepped she took out six of them with those two picks Saga is a uh, is a brutal one, and Lions yep. at Diamond is one of those. You know, it, it could it could or it could not. Yep. Have to say she went, ended up winning one six. I think her deck uh, should have performed better than that, and she kind of ran bad. But yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sometimes it's just not your day, especially with three people going five two on the day. Like it's hard. it doesn't leave a lot of space for everyone else to breathe. Yep. So here's Magnum. Tinker sure. um, got to play his Time Vault for the first time. Yeah. I like Daniel's deck. Um, it's not the style of deck that I like to play too much, but with my best interpretation, I would say um, 
it looks strong. It looks like it has all of the kind of pieces that he needs, save for maybe some fast mana stuff, you know, some Lion's Eye Diamond or some Black Lotus that you obviously love to see in these decks. Mm -hmm. uh, but no complaints. It looks it looks good. It looks powerful. Uh, I'm sure he like turn to some people at some point. Uh, I'm not totally sure if he chose the correct sideboard cards to shore up his different matchups. I'm curious as to whether or not he was picking his sideboard cards with specific matchups and specific cards in mind, or whether he was picking them because he thought, these are good sideboard cards, I will probably find my chances to use them. Uh, yeah, I don't know for sure either. Uh, what was the... What's the card... Um... They get, you give him two treasures to counter a spell for one mana. Oh, uh... An offer you can't offer refuse. You can't mm -hmm. I feel like that's a, that could have been undrafted here. I feel like that would have been very strong in his list. I think there's, like, a few that others that... That always sees play in the Thoracal deck. Uh, Correct. The Thoracal deck or the, three, or the Underworld Breach deck. It almost always sees play in. So it is a little shocking that neither him nor Cody wanted to pick it, though. Cody's not comboing with this Underworld Breach, so it's a little more understandable there. Like, I, I, this is this is me, like, playing into my tropes, but I also think that, like, I really would have liked to have seen him in a Doomsday list with us. He's, like, so close to it. Like, he could have just taken the Gush and pick 35 uh, and mm -hmm. taken Doomsday, and he's, like, there. Um, mm hmm I think it would have been a free tutor uh, for him. I, I don't know. I think there's like a lot of there's there's some quibbles around the edges, but obviously it's a strong card. He went with Beseech the Mirror and uh Bolas the Citadel instead. Um mm -hmm. but also I, I think more permission and less hand disruption would have been more useful. But I, I, I can't I, I'm quibbling at the edges. The deck seems very good to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh hundred percent agree. It does seem like perfectly good, uh perfectly fine. He um, went five two. If I had to I was gonna say I would have to rate it pretty highly all, all things considered not because it would be a deck that i would want to play i would pick one of these decks that probably did far worse yeah. uh, at the table if i was going to play one um but it, this looks exactly like the kind of deck i would lose to playing with my dorky abzan creatures or something you know yeah given that he doesn't have crypt lotus or recall this is i think the best uh like this is incredibly good in that archetype mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah well and you know just as my last statement i guess that i'll say is uh i do think he he had a lot of people bumping into him uh, in the draft yeah. and i think he managed to draft a very a nice cohesive deck where and not get too thrown off with other people taking you know you would love to have thought seize for your sideboard for this deck he had people bumping uh, you know, into him in the first few picks it. but he didn't he didn't have much of that after pick five i would say like there weren't any mm -hmm. other like spell based uh combo or interactive decks like that so i, th I think he got pretty free reign after that which is nice. We yes. love that. So, uh, what do you think nice about Mark's list? Um, there are some parts of it I like. I mean, I love he found like you obviously found a way to put a lot of great permanents in your deck and still play Oath of Druids, which mm -hmm. is very nice. Um, all the Planeswalkers and everything make for like a very sort of robust tap out strategy uh and oath gives you like a ton of matchups like deck matchups where you're super strong because you always have the threat of like this is my two mana card it's definitely going to win me the game and your deck has very very few ways to play around it because your your quote unquote play around is don't play any creatures not going to be how you win the game unless you're cardinal so, in which case you have cathar commando and lauren and like six other uh etb destroy artifacts enchantments as as he should um so i like that element of it i also like sneak attack uh as a backup for oath of druids just in the sense that if you draw your big creatures and you don't have them in your deck great you can put them into play with your sneak attack if your opponent is trying to play around you by not playing creatures great you can uh you can slap that kind of play i also like the fact that you found the strict serenade the swan song the forbidden orchard and the gift your opponent a frog fish in order to kind of ensure that even if your opponent was playing spell combo or blue eye control they were still going to come up with the creature at some point so yep. those were things i really really liked uh the things that i didn't really like is i don't know that you had the right interactive elements uh per se that not that the stuff you had was bad just that I don't know that it, if you could pick which interactive cards you wanted in your deck, uh, you might go a different direction, would, would yeah. be my only statement, I guess. I think Tasha's um, and Vexing Bauble uh, are like top of the list there, for sure. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. 
It would have been, I mean, deck. you know, unfortunately you never have the option to get like a strip mine in your deck here. Um, though with the late Ren and six pickup with the Paseju is, is so nice. It's so powerful. Um, it just makes, it makes me wish you had a little bit more to do with Ren. Yeah. Ren was okay. just, it's a card that's lying around there and I have a million fetch lands. It drew me lots of cards, mm -hmm. but other than that, it, it like yeah. fueled brainstorms and J storms, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is not, obviously that's not nothing. So it's fine. Can't, can't complain about that too much. Oh uh, yeah. I ended up going, what was it? Four, three. I was, it was that's did fine. Bad. Yeah, it should have been. Not it should have been five two. I think I punted a match, but other than that, yeah, beautiful. Well, we love that. Uh, and you know what? It wouldn't be a VRD without uh, at least one punt. Seven rounds of magic. That's a long. Uh, that's a long lot. So we have a card now on mono white Yorian. Okay, listen. Third I will pick say strip this. Mine. I will just say this one time. Okay, there are not a lot of white weenie creatures that you can slap down on the board and fuck with as many decks as Thalia fucks with. Okay. You are she, playing. She, what does she do against Brandon? You play her, Your and then opponent, he just kills you. <laughs> every person that plays this format puts five lands in their deck. Okay, none of them can pay attack <laughs> one mana. Okay, that's a fact. So, <laughs> so all I'm gonna say here is that Thalia is an incredibly busted magic card. It's a ridiculous magic card, and it should get all the respect in the world uh from everybody it's the second best white creature in the game uh and you should pick it right after you pick uh stone fork and stash Off fuck the initial white creatures, creatures they're all garbage you heard mark <laughs> say earlier that uh the hero of blade holds is the truth i didn't even say it this time you guys mark said it he's a smart guy you know him he's from uh st louis uh so you can respect his opinion and uh i, I think there's you know there's not really too much to say about it after that <laughs> You see, you see that, uh, as for that. the rest of his deck, every single other card in his deck that's not just Thalia. Um, yeah, I think I think he drafted what looks like a good version of the Death and Taxes deck. Um, it's a deck... Th I like the fact that he branched out a little bit and started uh, touching green. I don't know that he wound up with any actual green spells in his deck, right? I don't think he had so. some green lands. Um, if I were him, I would have maybe looked uh, a little more interestedly in picking some of those green cards that I think work well in that deck. Um, I maybe would have looked at playing some like Eldrazi creatures, like Reality Smasher, Thought Not Seer, something love, like that. I would have loved Eldrazi that. Displacer. Um, you know, it's tough when you don't have Mana Crypt, but you do have a lot of Colorless Lands in your deck. Uh, you have a lot of access. Um, I will say his uh, trouble was also that he couldn't being, play lands really because he had to get a uh, build yeah, up to Yorion. Mm -hmm. So he had no sideboard and no white, lands. Yeah, and the mono white stuff definitely makes it easier to play him. Uh, Yorion, which I do think is probably worth it. Yorion's super, super powerful. Uh, so I like the I like the deck. Um, I think it looks looks pretty nice. I would probably give it a hallmark seven out of ten Death and Taxes deck. Maybe an eight out of ten Death and Taxes deck. I I really do like the way it looks. Yeah, I hate this archetype, but I do think that this is a pretty well built one. I just man. You get so little flexibility post board once you once you go into Yorian. I have a really hard time thinking this is good. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, once you say it's a Yorian uh, death and taxes list, I think this might be the best possible version of it. Like it's very close mm -hmm. to, if not the best possible version of it. And I'm gonna say if you if someone in the draft is trying to mill you out, hey, you know, <laughs> yeah, draft, not, not so much uh, draft concern a in VIP. chunky deck, uh, kind of kind of nice. So, yeah, uh, I like Daniel's deck. I think he did a pretty nice job. Especially, it's it's a tough archetype to draft, especially with the red-white initiative deck being so popular now. Um, and, and everyone's sort of jumping on that. You lose a lot of your good cards uh, against that. It's so you true. really need to find the lane of being disruptive and aggressive enough while not missing out on having, you know, half a dozen white creatures that someone else is going to want to pick from you. Absolutely. Well, he thank you for joining us, Mason, probably. and... I thank you that uh, in your picture, at least, Mrs. Mason Lang is there as well. Um, disappointing, oh, she's oh, been she so looked... quiet this whole time. But yeah, oh, she's shouting things from the background. You just can't hear. Her. <laughs> uh, I keep I keep her uh, muted over there. She nice starts. Sense. The the thing is, I know when to turn it down and be nicer uh, to people's uh, quirky and eclectic decks. She's really belligerent about it. Um, wow. She gets she gets mad. All right. Well, thank you for joining. Uh, this is a blast. People, let me know what you think. Uh, we can do a lot more of these, but it's fun to at least be able to look back at the at the draft we just did.